What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever Gamescast Patreon exclusive. Uh, Kevin, what month is this for? April? May? I'm going to say April. For April 2017, I'm Tim Geddes, as always. Joined by Andy Cortez. Hey. Maximum Cortez himself. I didn't have hey, a guys. little fucking fun name for you. You know what I mean? You are one of the coolest dudes in video games. Now but, I am. You know, now you've earned it. I'm like top 400 percent. Okay. Top 400 percent. Top 400 percent. Andy Cortez. It means he's. he's do, the math, he's, do the math, Kevin. Do the goddamn math. Big Cav Doc. Do the math for. He's like a for heck sake, man. Percenter. Man, for heck sake. Yeah. I love you, man. I love you. Such a sweet young boy. Thanks, yeah. guys. Aw. Yeah. How are you? Been? So this is your like I don't know third fourth week. I'm in my th I am uh, three and a half weeks in. Yeah. Oh my god. Seventeen business days. You just keep getting more and more proud. You know they start to crawl and they start talking yeah. and then they won't stop talking. And then they're getting their asses slapped every day well, by employees. You're not supposed to talk about that stuff. What? what Nick does to you behind closed doors. <sighs> Kevin or Greg slapped me on the ass so hard that. Cool, <laughs> that cool. Greg said it should be a ha a sync clap. Yeah, that it was like so audible. It was a, it was a good slap. Yeah, Greg, Greg. Uh, Nick, you want to cool give Greg. any uh any input on this? <laughs> come come talk. You told me when we were in our initial discussions to have you come work for this fine company that I would have exclusive access to that ass. I, in fact, I remember it because I have an email where you spelled it dad ass. Oh. D A T A S S. <laughs> it may not have been you. It may have been something that I completely wrote to myself. There's and an Andrea Andy. Cortez out there that's yeah. like, what? <laughs> it's a really bad, like, forged signature. Look, it boils down to this. You guys know our good friend Hunter Pence. Mm -hmm. You know, plays for one team called the San Francisco Giants. Now, in baseball, they do what's called the good game, where they give you a little pat on the ass. Okay, it's not considered sexual harassment. I don't know if they still do that, and I've never seen Hunter do it. But they do do that. Yeah. I'm on some level. I'm sure that someone somewhere still gives the good game. I'm just saying, you had a good game today. You got two pats on the ass. One okay. from me, and one from Greg. Okay, I, I actually got four from Greg today. Wow, that seems excessive. <laughs> it's, it's a great game. <laughs> Having said that, <laughs> you may have a lawsuit on your hands. There you go. Oh, man. So, Andy, your journey has been very tumultuous yeah. to get here to now the I'm kind here. of funny studios. But yeah. now you are here. That, I wanted to talk about that journey. I want to mm -hmm. talk about you and video games and your career and jobs and all of that stuff and how it intermingled sure. to have you get to this table. This table. Yeah. Um, it's a really odd thing. Like, when I trace everything back, all the different moves that had to happen, it's really bizarre. Like, you know, um, I think... When I was younger, I always wanted to do art. I was always into like the making of documentaries on HBO. And when everybody graduated from fucking from elementary to middle school, you know, you had that little ceremony. Oh, yeah, you had the fun little thing. They yeah. played Rocky theme song and everybody yeah. did the hand thing. Uh, everybody wanted to be, you know, an astronaut, an astronaut. or a cop or an Princess. FBI agent or a major league baseball player. I said visual effects artist, which was like so fucking weird. And yeah. like, and I even had a friend of mine from back in the day remind me, like, man, I remember you said you wanted to do that. Yeah. And it's really weird that it, like, played out, and I actually did what I wanted to do since I was a kid. Uh, but visual artists back then, I don't know what the fuck that meant. To me, that was like, make the big fucking T-Rex move in Jurassic Park. Yeah. That shit was like, tight. That shit's fucking yeah. tight. I want to do that. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so I, I was drawn all my whole life, uh, super into art, creating, like, I was making games, but not like actual designing them. I meant like I would draw characters and rip off like Zelda and Mega Man and shit like that. But they were my games. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It wasn't the Legend who of Zelda. Your, who were your Mega Man bosses? Um, I well, so my my Mega Man that I ripped off, I cr I named him Bleepo, <laughs> and he, you know, what he looked like exactly total rip off visual design of Roly Poly Oli on Disney Channel with okay. the springs Shout as the arms. Shout out to Roly Poly Oli. The springs as the arms. Yeah. yeah. Totally ripped off that design. But then whenever he beat a boss, he'd get the dudes, like that boss is like awesome visor. And he'd get that, the other boss is like fucking awesome wing set and shit. So yeah, it was like stupid shit like that that I was doing in elementary and, and like getting into middle school. Um, and I just always had a special place in my heart for video games. Mm -hmm. Like it was always my brother and I playing on the weekends and my parents like hiding the console during the week so we couldn't play it you know yeah even though it was on the third row 
third Everyone knows where the it closet. is. Yeah. yeah, my mom's strategy was to hide the uh, AC adapter. Oh, that's for, smart. That's a lot right? easier. Yeah. Take like, it with her to she work. She would just take maybe. it and hide it, but it's just like, little did she know, I was resourceful. And the electric piano also used the same AC oh, adapter. Oh, shit. And that shit worked fine. That's really smart. Yeah. That's really smart, yeah. Tim. So, speaking of video games, where did you start? Um, I... I know it started somewhere in the NES era. I don't remember exactly where. When were you born? 88. 1988. Mm -hmm. So NES has been out years at this point. Mm -hmm. SNES comes out in 90, 90, 90 91, 90. some of the, yeah. I think 90, yeah. Yeah. So so for you, your old, older brother? Yeah. Okay. So that's where, where the NES Correct. Yeah. He was born. Sense. He was born in 82. So we had an NES mm. and I have like those memories that are like barely there that I can kind of picture myself like playing that uh, some fucking racing game where you're racing around a track on NES. And then, of course, I remember Super Mario Bros. 3. Yeah, of course. Like that's like the one that definitely is ingrained in my brain um, uh, along with, um, well, was, was no, All Stars was SNES. Yeah, All Stars was the first game that I owned. Oh, okay. And God damn, what a game that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. To this day, best single game cartridge in existence. Like, and even disc and any of that stuff. Like any officially put out game. Wasn't it just a gray cartridge? But what I'm saying is, uh, for what it had in it. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, All yeah. the Mario games, especially the one I had was Mario All-Stars plus World. Uh, so it also I included see. World. I'm like, you don't get better than that. There's been like Namco Museum collections. No. And Sega Genesis collections. Like, no, 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 no. But you ain't Mario All-Stars, yeah. bro. I thought you meant best looking cart, which oh. in my mind goes to Maximum like, Carnage, where oh, I got my oh, name from. Hot red thing. Maximum Carnage, Maximum Cortez, the super hot red. I remember renting that shit so many times from like the local freeze frame, which yeah. is the local and or all hit video. Man, life was so. I, I didn't know that's where you got your Maximum Cortez from. For yeah. some reason, I always thought that it was a Neo Cortex reference, but that doesn't make no, any sense. No, it doesn't. Maximum no. Cortez, Maximum Carnage. Yeah, I fucking love that. That's one of my favorite like SNES games. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, gaming back in the day was um, Mario, of course. Like I, I don't have a huge. Uh, gaming past because like we just couldn't afford that shit you know like I wasn't buying games all the time or mm -hmm. whatever a lot of a lot of it was renting games at the local all hit video uh, all or hit video all hit video or freeze frame which had a two story it was a two story building and the top floor had all the horror movies and all the porn movies oh man and it freeze was, frame's a dope and game, it was though. so scary going up there dude yeah, like the horror you, or the porn well, well, both, because you felt like like it, you always felt in danger of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, that's so funny, though, because it's like when you're a little kid, there's nothing more tantalizing and scary than the porn section. Yeah. Because you know you're not supposed to be there, and you feel like everyone's watching. Oh, it. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Adults I, don't give a fuck. Like, the cameras are watching me. I know it. But, like, just walking those stairs, and it was like a... It was like the fucking Titanic staircase that like formed oh up like that, God. right? Yeah. And so it was so scary being up there. I thought that like it was haunted. I remember like my brother and I like we were probably we probably made up stories that it was haunted at some point. But uh, yeah, and that was freeze frame in far Texas, man. Freeze frame, that shit was man. rad. We had a what was it called? Kevin? Ultimate video. Ultimate Shout shit. Out to Ultimate video. <laughs> that place. It also had one of those like two layer situations that should have that should have been the name for kind of funny ultimate i know you guys said quality internet quality videos. internet videos would have been fantastic but not ultimate video ultimate video Fun story yeah i legitimately called the city about the building that ultimate video is used to be because it's been abandoned for years it became a sofa place for like three years that failed and i called the city and i was like who owns this property and it took me a while and they're like eventually they called me back and they're like oh yeah the city owns it I was like, is the city looking to sell? Because that place, still in my mind, is the perfect place for the next kind of funny studios. The, like, warehouse. It's fucking dope. Is that, a is that near your house? It's oh, in Daly it's, City. It's, it's right close to my house. Yeah, it's in between my your mom two and places my house, right now. Yeah. Is that why you, is that the place we were walking by? Yes. When, well, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. yeah I, wait, we, I think we were driving by, and I was like, that place over there. One always day. wanted it. One yeah. Day. No, it was a special place though because there was the blockbusters, right? Yeah. And those are always fucking dope. Uh, blockbusters is gonna be a topic Wait, on. Sorry, just to close that out. Unfortunately, San San Francisco or something has some law that they can't sell any of the property they own, or I think it's California right now. Just bullshit. One day. One day. We'll win. 
Uh, Blockbuster and Tower Records are gonna. It's gonna be a topic of mine on GOG coming up because like there's a lot of good memories there. But Ultimate Video for me was really like where the video games were at because by the time that I was renting games, it was Super Nintendo through and through sure, like, coming yeah. up on N64 time, right? Because I was born in '89, so. I, the first system I played a lot of was the NES. Like, my dad had a um, Commodore 64, but, like, you know, whatever. That's yeah, just, yeah. Bleeps and bloops. Uh, but Kevin and his family had an NES, so I played a lot over there. My first system was Super Nintendo, so I started running a lot of those games. And I remember the Ultimate Video was always so impressed with me because they had all the NES games. Oh. Still ran. Like, Blockbuster was like, nah, man, we over that shit. You know, I, I guess our Blockbuster was the nicer... Um like the nicer non-family owned place was Hollywood Video. Hollywood that was rarer video. here. Okay. They they were they were around but they like blockbusters were on like every oh, okay. district had a blockbuster. Yeah, I guess we had a Hollywood Video within walking distance. So that was like we'd go to Hollywood all the fucking time. Um after after it was it was built a little bit later, I'd say towards the end of elementary where freeze frame and the other spots were like there since before I was born probably. Uh, but yeah, not really renting a whole lot of NES games. We're mostly anti, uh, renting SNES games. Yeah. Um, and I remember getting my my SNES and Mario All Stars was that bundle. It yep. came with the yep. bundle or whatever. That was my, the first thing I bought. Was yeah. The bundle. And that shit was fucking hot, and it was really fun. And uh, and from there, like I remember my friend uh, CP came over and brought over Mega Man X, Ooh. and uh, totally hit it from him. And I was like, hey, man, I can't find your game, dude. Uh, if I find it to you, I'll bring it to you at, at school. And he was like, all right. Just because I wanted the rest of that Sunday to play Mega Man X. Because I was just like, this is the best game I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And I took it back to him. I was like, hey, okay, I found good. it. It fell. Good. Oh, I didn't see it. I was like, oh, it fell behind my... Yeah. I forgot what I told him. Because I was say, that's a fucked up no, movie. No, 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 no. I just like, I needed to have this game for one more day. Well, that's what's what's funny about you is if I were to describe you in a video game, it would probably be Mega Man X. Yeah. In Mega terms of just colors and sound and oh all that. Oh, my God. One... Like, so many... Like, even when I would want... Mega Man X is how I started learning how to write, like, harmonies in music. Because I was in a band and I... Um, I would look up all the tablatures, all the, the music sheets for the Mega Man soundtrack. And that's how I started learning how to write. Like, oh, that's how guitars harmonize. Well, that's Mega Man X like, is like the guitar game. Fuck yeah, like, dude. That shit's fucking yeah. so sick. Even that, the first opening level, oh, man. Yeah. That song is just, it goes so hard. It's so awesome, dude. I'll, I'll, I mean, all the Mega Man songs fucking yeah. rule. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I remember Colin saying that, Dr. Wiley's castle on three is better than two, which is so false. It's so false. He, it's, it, that is the most hipster ass thing you could yeah, possibly say. I mean, like, Dr. Wiley's theme in two, is it overrated? No, it is perfectly rated. It is the best it is, song. It's just a perfect song. Yeah, it's it's great. fucking perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Mega Man X was huge for me. Uh, of course, Link to the Past. Um, I was like the total guy. I was the guy who played all the like more known hits. I didn't really play any like weird offshoot. You games. you weren't getting into that Earthbound shit. Earthbound now is cool and everybody okay, so likes it, but back then nobody. Earthbound was a totally a game that I always saw in that big ass box on the top row. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I want to play it, but I don't want to play yeah. it. You know, it was and a it big said, ass box. It, it was a large box. Yeah, someone said I'd get like Mortal Kombat. My brothers mm -hmm. and I would play Mortal Kombat or whatever. Uh, my brother and I, not brothers. Um, yeah, and then like. My aunt got the 64 when it came out, Ooh. and and I still had the SNES. I was like, oh, man, I want to... She took it over for Christmas vacation. She lived in Austin, and we were still back home. So she would drive down with her family, uh, and they brought over the 64, and I was like, oh, my God, Mario. Dad, check Dad. He can run anywhere, Dad. Yeah. Like, you don't get it. He's not running just side to side. He can go wherever the fuck he wants. And that was such a, like, mind-blowing moment to me, and... And so influential to me to see that, like, that this is what, what games can be, you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, of course, I've been a fan of Kind of Funny for a long time, and uh, Greg always mentions that Metal Gear Solid 1, the first Metal Gear Solid, was his his moment of, like, oh, my God, this is what games can do. Yeah. I'd say it was probably 64 for me. Yeah. Um, which is still, like, so fucking brilliantly designed of, like, hey, yes, this painting has this hub world, but there's like seven different things you can do in that hub world. Like, yeah. it's, 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 they do such a good job of doing so much with so little. 
Uh, yeah, blew my mind. There's something about Mario 64 that is so special that I don't think I could ever be tired of talking about it mm -hmm. and just enjoying the moment that you just explained. Totally. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, especially for me, like that was that game that was like, oh my God. And it felt like you never learned all the secrets. Yeah. It was like Mario World was like that as well. But the fact that Mario 3D, there was just this level of creativity when it came to in 64, like the paintings alone as a concept. Yeah. Was so genius. Cool. <laughs> You're in this castle and just explore exploring just the castle was so much fun. Yeah. Not even going into the castle, just running around the grass and climbing the trees and doing backflips. Mario was fun to control. Mm -hmm. You know, just being just playing was it was fun. just like a sandbox. Exactly. Sort of thing. So yeah. everything else you added on top of it was just it just made it even more and more brilliant. And it's just weird that like I there's been amazing Mario games since. And there's been some that I think are even better Mario games. None of them ever captured the pure brilliant magic of 64. Yeah. Where it's like the moments of uh that the room where there's the mirror and you only see the painting in the mirror. Oh yeah. It's like, are you fucking kidding? The never ending staircase. The never ending staircase yeah. when you go to the first Bowser and then the, the floor drops open, but you always try to jump over the thing yeah. even though there's an invisible wall. It's like those moments, man. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Um but sixty four was the route that I did not take. I wanted a sixty four. My dad was like, get the Sony one. My dad's okay, a big thank God. I thought you were about to be a Saturn no, boy. No, no. Oh man. <laughs> My dad's a big electronics like geek, right? So he's like of course, he's a Sony fan, and he, yep. you know, he knows all the top brands. He was like, "No, get this. It's on a disc. It's going to be better than a cartridge, Andy." Yeah, all right, so Andy. we went for Sony. For, went for the PS One uh, with the bundle and had a demo disc. Crap of the wrapper. PS One demo discs, man, and yeah. PS Two, but specifically PS One. Like cool. those were a thing. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Uh, so PS One is is the route that I took. Uh, so what does that route look like? Metal Gear Solid was just like, oh my god, Th this, I remember a, it's like, we called him my cousin, but he, really he's been like, his dad was my dad's friend since they were young, so it's like, yeah, we saw him all the it's time, like yeah, I would just say my cousin, yeah, exactly, yeah, and he brought over Metal Gear Solid, and, uh, and then he lent it to me, and he was like, yeah, you can just borrow it, and when you beat it, I was like, oh my god, and like, the 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 codec on the back of the instruction booklet and Psycho Mantis, all that stuff just like I'm sure everybody listening to this is like, yeah, we've heard this a million times, but like But I mean that, man, that's why, man. These moments it are just blew my that we fucking mind. Share. Um just incredible. And from there I was like, oh my God, whatever this Kojima dude is cooking, <laughs> like I'm gonna eat I that want, shit. I'm gonna eat that yeah. shit. Yeah. Um so PS1, um I gotta ask. What about my boy Crash? Hell yeah, I played Crash. Hell yeah, you did. So I played hey. Crash 1 and 2 were the okay. ones that I played. Wow, really? Do I remember them a whole lot? Not really. Mm, okay, okay. <laughs> like, watching the demo, watching the 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 remaster, yeah. like, all that shit I recognized, yeah. of course. I remember watching you stream it on your birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of course, I recognize all that shit. Uh, I think Crash 1 is just a little bit more memorable to me because it was, like, the first, like, version of their mascot. Yep. Um... So that's why it's a little bit more memorable to me. Well, I have a weird memory. Like, I'm either not going to remember shit or I'm going to have, like, the most vivid, vivid, like, I was there and I can see it in my head right now. Yeah. But it's, I don't know, it's really bizarre. There's tons of games I just don't remember mm. playing, mm. but I did. Yeah. Um, even, like, the Mega Man games on PS1, like, very wow. forgettable and I just don't remember them Legends at all. Legends and all those? Or are you talking about, like, the X? I mean, even, like, X, you yeah. know, um, fucking X4, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so speaking of PlayStation, like I gotta ask based on the hair, Final Fantasy. Uh, nah, you nah. just it's just not your thing. Final Fantasy was never a thing for me. Um, mm. A cousin of mine played it, and I remember going over and seeing that's a lot of discs. How long have you been playing this for? He was like, I don't know, however, like a month or whatever. Seventeen years. <laughs> and I just like, I didn't get into turn base until Pokemon. Mm. I mean that that makes sense. I mean honestly, like, I didn't get into Final Fantasy till after Pokemon, because I was a youngin. There are games that I remember though that like, I remember Vagrant Story. Wow, was that's, like that's a I have like a, a, pull. a big memory from that game for some reason. Even though huh. I didn't particularly love the game, yeah, it's still like meant a lot to me for some reason. Um, I'm like that with Legend of Dragoon. I didn't like the game, but I played it. Brave a lot. Fencer Musashi. Yeah, yeah, yeah I fucking loved that game. Um, yeah, I don't know, just weird shit like that. And then so I always knew that I wanted to play games growing up. And then I got a PS2 and then popped in Metal Gear Solid 2 because a, a classmate lent it to me. And I remember I remember I 
I was saving up for it. And eventually my mom was like, you know what? I'll just pay for the rest. Like whatever you saved. And it was no like way. awesome. So we bought it. We took it home. And my brother got home from school. And uh, I just kind of like walking in the living room. He was like, I was like, hey, want to come check out my PS2? And he's like, shut up. Like he didn't believe me. So he walked over. He's like, oh my God, the fuck. Just the the way the black with the blue oh, light. Dude, like that box. <laughs> even just yes, the blue dude. box. Yeah. I was just like. It's a oh, statement. It's it like really you're getting a Sony fucking product dude, right here. They're like. Nowadays, it looks a little dated yeah, and whatever. Sure, sure. I don't give a fuck. Looking at the PS2, the, the original console, it's a thing of beauty. That just sleek black with that sexy ass PS2 yeah. blue on the top. Super sci-fi uh, looking. Uh, Popping Metal Gear Solid 2 and then uh, just the intro yeah. on the Verrazano Bridge and just like... Was it the Verrazano Bridge? No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Grand Theft Auto. But it was, yeah, that bridge Yeah, um, in New York. With the with the with the fucking octo camo bullshit yep, he had on the it, music playing, just like this, off. like how is this a game, dude? Yeah. Like, how is this real right now? How oh am I about to start God. playing this? And I remember seeing uh, my friends playing the demo uh, from the, um, Zone the from the Zone of the Enders Which disc. Seems like a very Andy game. I never got into that game. Really? No, 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 never did because I didn't have my PS2 at the time. Mm. I, I saw that demo being played, um, and my friends were the ones that had the PS2 before I had it. So Grand Theft Auto 3 was another big like, oh my god, yep, this yep. fucking game is this looks so cool. Um oh, there was three big games at that time. It may have been, you know what? It may have been Grand Turismo 3, Final Fantasy 10, because my GTA 3. I played a little Devil bit of May Cry. Final Fantasy 10 was a game that I did play a little bit of. I put maybe like 20 my first 30 Final hours Fantasy. into it. Final um 10. and uh that for some reason I didn't like I didn't hate it. I I normally just don't like for example, I popped in. I popped in. I started um, um, Cosmic Star Heroin. Oh yeah, and I was like turn based. Nope, no thanks. Mm. I, I just like I. I just it's not for me. Mm. And I know I understand the greatness of Final Fantasy and like it what it what means it to games, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. just I cannot get into that shit. But um, oh, you know what? It was Devil May Cry. Yeah, uh, for PS2. That like the PS1 was also fucking awesome. But mm. the my friends. Well, there was no Devil May Cry on PS1. PS2 was the first one. PS2 was the first one. Okay, so then it, I guess it was that one. Uh, it was because Devil May Cry was supposed to be Resident Evil Four, and then oh, as shit. they were I didn't going, even know that. yeah, That's as cool. they were directing it and like going down the the path of making it, they're like, this is this is way more fun as an action game, and then they're like, fuck it, let's split. Because I remember like my friend CP and his brother Orly and his brother Hector, they all had their games, and CP was GTA Three, Orly was Metal Gear, and Hector was Devil May Cry, and like so like. I'd go over and each one of them might be playing one of those games at a different time. I was like, God, I, I want that console. And yeah. eventually I got it and it was fucking awesome. So um, awesome. Yeah, cause for me, I got my PS2. Uh, I, I say fairly early on, but that was fairly early on as a kid because I got it before a lot of my friends did, but I still got it probably a year into its existence. Hmm. Um, when, I, when I got it, I had to trade in a whole bunch of games to be able to, to get it. And the only game I got with it was Crazy Taxi, huh. which was like, love Crazy Taxi, but I never had a Dreamcast, Dreamcast so I port. To, to play it on that. Uh, but it was one of those PS2 games that had the blue bottom because it was CD based instead of DVD. So it was like not the best example to like run uh, this beautiful new system on. I see. Uh, but my friend had Animusha, and that was kind of how our friend, my, one of my best friends, current. Uh, it's how we forged our friendship was from him letting me borrow Animusha and just being like, holy shit, this game is choice but then uh, then did you play you, Devil May did Cry. you a big favor yeah uh, yeah devil may cry is uh so much better yeah so much better just stylistically story everything was fucking great about that and it was game. so perfect for being a like 12 year old kid at the time where it's just like hot topics cool and like, yeah. all that like the totally the, the character design edgy. Yeah. It was so edgy he had cool ass fucking, hair yeah. i was like god i want to be dante like, man i fucking shoot people yeah Ebony and ivory oh, man. and i got a just sword all that shit was so fucking cool and yeah. like I wanted to be Dante so bad. And yeah. I want like I wanted the abs, I wanted the the white hair for some reason. Trish. Oh, get out of town. <sighs> get out of town, boys. Uh and so what happened after PS2? Uh, so the my quick PS2 story that I don't know if I've ever told on on a show uh is the sound that the PS2 makes is so identifiable. Where you just turn when the PS2 is on just the sound of the fan. And oh sure is spinning mm -hmm. where it's like you would never really think about it but when you hear it like so i haven't had a playstation 2 like in front of me in probably a decade right yeah uh when i first started dating gia i was at her house and um her roommate like is in a band so he was like never there and we i came over one time 
and it was just me and her in, in the place and like it was like dead silent i just hear this like mm. i'm like it's still kicking huh this is weird i looked over at her and we we ate dinner we did this whole thing and then i was just like hey is there a playstation 2 on right now and she's <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about i'm like do you have a playstation 2 she's like N no and i'm like does your roommate she's like i don't know and I'm like, I, there's a fucking PS2 on in this house. And I looked around, lo and fucking behold, there was a PlayStation 2 on. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? The guy had left it on and he was using it as a DVD player. With the cool ass blue and oh, that sexy green. Ass, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so man. awesome. But yeah, that's sound. You don't know you know it, but you do. And then I think it was it was my friends playing Halo that I that just like I remember being I I fucking just have this fucking vivid ass memory of being after um waiting to be taken home to be picked up by my parents or whoever uh or whoever whatever stranger wanted to pick me up that day um and um them talking about hearing them talking about sticky grenades i was like i did not know what they were talking about but it was like my best friends the same three brothers that i was talking about uh and they were talking about yeah they got this game called halo i was like what the fuck's this halo game um and i remember playing Halo with them and just like, oh my God, this multiplayer game like yeah. is the funnest fucking thing I've ever played. I'm going to go to Austin and babysit for my uncle and with that money, I'm going to buy an Xbox. Well, before I even went, my dad was like, you know what? I'll buy it for you. And oh, just pay me shit. back. So I had the fucking, the, the green see-through Halo the limited edition. edition one. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, that fucking console was yeah. so awesome. Dude, with, and the, just, with the console first-person shooters, like there was obviously GoldenEye and everyone fell in love sure, with that. Yeah. Perfect Dark came out. I was like, oh yeah. my God. But then the spiritual successor was Time Splitters, which was mm -hmm. on the PlayStation 2. Did you ever play that? No, franchise? I did not. No. Fucking awesome. But it's very much a GoldenEye, Perfect Dark kind of successor in a, in a dying age for what the, those games were. And when and I love them so much. But there, it's like, it's kind of in the space between spaces between uh, GoldenEye and Overwatch. Okay. Is Time Splitters. Um, but then when Halo came out, Halo did for console first person shooters what Mario 64 did, which is like every single thing felt perfect and the, from sticky grenades to just how the split screen worked to the names of all the characters like the like donut and tucker and like all the shit like all the red versus blue names are based off of just the default names yeah. caboose uh in in the game and it was just like there's some there was like a lore to it e sure. there was a lore to the multiplayer which was amazing yeah and just countless matches of that like yeah. blood gulch beaver creek oh my god it was always like if you want a shit to get real it was CTF on Hang'em High. Oh yeah, and like that's where like that's where you tested your true skills. See, for for us, it was Deathmatch or uh, Slayer on uh, Hang'em High or CTF with a full team on Blood Gold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boarding action snipes, Chiron Ooh. shotguns. God Ooh. damn, man! So many great memories from Halo, and like the constant system linking from one room to the other at my mm -hmm. friend Leo's house, like keeping his parents up late at night. There'd be like. 10 kids in his fucking house like playing halo and yelling at each other and getting into fights and like arguing yeah. with each other and shit um yeah man halo was huge for me um not only i guess i i always had like my tight group of friends but um i think from there i started you know making more friends that were outside of my group you know kid, other kids who were halo fans and um yeah halo was so huge for me so from there i was no longer a playstation boy i was an xbox boy Ooh. so i went 360 um as and most did and halo 2 was just again huge for me xbox halo Live. 2 was xbox so. oh yeah yeah sorry sorry so halo 2 um was we were playing xbc mm -hmm. um xbc well that was halo 1 was xbc and halo 1 was xbc yeah um, and going over to my friend's house and Man, you were into yeah, it. Yeah, dude. I like uh, that. My friends had like and I wanted that setup. I don't know how the fuck it was set up. I don't yep. know what you connect to the router to this and that or the you had a switch connected to the router. Like well, how the fuck do you even do this? But we would get home and um type in the chat like, Hey, we want to do uh CTF on Hang'em High and they'd be like, All right, well we wanna do this in this match and the winner gets to pick the third match. Uh or whatever, you know. And so we were just like playing Halo against random kids that on the internet, before man. Xbox Live was even so a thing. And it was cool. just so just using, awesome, using man. Using like aim to it, coordinate. It fucking blew my mind. And then and then yeah, Halo 2 came around and that's when when things uh, got real. That's when things got real and then there were clan matches and you fucking uh was that Halo 2? The, the rush to level 50. 
Oh, man. Matchmaking. Creating, Halo 2 was the birth of matchmaking. Uh, Halo 2 sort of introduced me to, like, I, I think it was Halo 2, uh, where you created your clans. Oh, yeah. I mean, clans were in a lot of... Uh, Clans were in Counter Strike was what, but yeah, but uh, like they it. they introduced me to like the idea of like, hey, all of us can have the same the same a symbol, and yeah, same symbols, the and same logo, yeah, uh, the Team Kitty Cowboys, and we were uh, Hispanic Panic, and that's when Hispanic I realized there's a lot of racist people on the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After every match, like you fucking wetbacks, like yeah. oh my god, Jesus. Nah. Uh, so yeah, Halo was huge for me, and then um, I lost my two best friends to Halo Two, Curry mm -hmm. and Alfredo, both of them, like. We were all so good, and I'm I'm a casual sure player when it comes to Halo. Like I'm not good, but I had fun playing Capture the Flag and just fucking around and shit. But I'm not good at it. They got so good, and they would just get hooked. And every night they're like, "Gotta get to level 50. Yeah, yeah. I got it. My my KD man. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, man. Uh, I remember the night that we got Roadrunner installed, Time Warner Roadrunner. Like we got fucking high speed internet. We got Xbox Live ready to go. And my first match was. I didn't know that you were, I didn't know the, the way the leveling worked on multiplayer. So like my first match was a Slayer on Beaver Creek and I just fucking destroyed everybody. I was like, oh my God, this, I'm so good I'm at this shit. I'm a fucking shit. God. <laughs> yeah. So, but like little did I know that like, yeah. you know, that's not how it worked out. You played the shitty people at first and then eventually you got better or whatever. But yeah, it was awesome. Um, and so again, video games have always been huge to me and I was always drawing stuff. I was drawing Huge into drawing Dragon Ball Z and Master Chief and fucking Resident Evil and all these different characters. Um, so now we're Xbox 360. So yeah. we're up until what? 2006? Still had my, you know, I still had my, my, uh, I still had my PS2. When P you started working? Um, no. Because I'm thinking of like Snake Eater. Because I still beat Snake Eater. Snake, Snake Eater, Eater was, was huge for me on PS2. Pretty late in the game. Yeah, that PS2. was like towards the very, very end. Um, and I've the, the best bosses in the game, in my opinion, the best collection. Oh, really? Of, of Metal Gear bosses. See, I can get down with that from a gameplay perspective. Uh, but you can't beat the bosses from one man. Yeah. That, that team is just so iconic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe the gameplay, maybe that is what it is. Um, but I remember, um, yeah, l once I was done with Metal Gear and I, I was more of an Xbox guy. Um, Xbox Live was just where it was at. That's where all my friends were at. That's where I got, that's where I made a bunch of friends who were like friends of friends. And suddenly I was friends with these people and I didn't know who they were, but we were playing online games together and it was so cool. Um, I'm trying to think of like what that timeline looked like. It well, was I mean, high if it school. was Xbox Live, yeah, it must have been like that started with Halo 2 on the Xbox. Yeah. In a, in a real way. Yeah. That was and like, then, I'd say towards the end, yeah. I get, you know, I remember. My parents left for New Year's Eve. They they drove to Austin for New Year's, and my brother and I stayed home. And it was straight up play Halo from two p.m. until six a.m. Oh fall asleep, wake up like at yeah. one, play from two p.m. to set. like it was nonstop. Dude, it was, we gotta we gotta figure out some Halo Let's Plays. It was an addiction, dude. Like because I think that we we could that would be fucking, fucking awesome. We that gotta figure out though. Like I'm talking OG. I mean, actually, with the Master Chief Collection, maybe yeah, maybe we can get that set up in a yeah. more easy to digest yeah. way. Yeah, absolutely. Not all shitty looking. Yeah. Uh, and um, so where am I now? Um, so when did you kind of, cause I mean, from there we can kind of put together, like just what's the brief recap of you went 360 and then you're a PS4 boy now. Um, 360, I went to, um, I went to Xbox one. Oh, yeah. that okay. was the first console I bought, uh, because all my friends were on it because I had my gamer tag. Um, I only owned a PS3 because I wanted to play Uncharted and then I and sold my, and then I sold my PS3. And then The Last of Us came out, and I bought another PS3. Wow. Uh, all used. Like, yeah, I was just yeah, buying yeah. them used from friends or from uh, one of them I bought from Craigslist. And then once that was over, I sold my PS3 again. So it was like I just played the exclusive on, on PS3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or I saw friends play other games or whatever. But, like, yeah, Naughty Dog was like, oh, my God, this is, like, next level the type Naughty shit. Naughty Gods, man. Yeah, this is, Naughty, this is a next level type shit. So that was awesome. Uh, but I was Xbox One all the way. Um and uh, yeah, I was just attached to my gamer tag, attached to all my friends on there. And then it wasn't until 
I knew that like, all right, whatever Naughty Dog does next is probably what I'm going to do, right? Um, and so now I think, when did I get my PS4? Because I bought an OG PS4 and then I sold that to upgrade to a Pro. Mm. Um, am I using the Pro to its full capabilities? Whatever, no, no. You're using it though. Not at all, yeah. But I'm having fun with it. Um, so this is interesting to me because if I remember correctly, you became a fan of Greg and the whole situation via Beyond. Yeah. yeah. So you were listening to Beyond even though you were a 360 guy. Um, I started listening to Beyond probably towards the tail end of that generation. Mm, okay. um, I think I had just gotten an Xbox One when I, I started listening to Beyond like around 2012 maybe. Wow, okay. Maybe 2013. Um, because I remember listening to it, like re- listening to Beyond, listening to Unlocked. Um, to me, I didn't know that I wanted... Um, I didn't know that I wanted general topics from my video game people. So kind of funny existed. And I was like, no, they're not like, I'd rather hear them talk about video games. Yeah. 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 Just like the radio show I listened to Dan Levitard back in the day, I would have never ever wanted to hear anything but sports talk from my sports people. Mm -hmm. But now it's like Dan Levitard talks about whatever the hell he wants because he hates talking about sports. And I love that shit. Yeah. I just love like the general talk. I didn't know that that's something I wanted out of my video game. Um, personalities or whatever um but yeah so i was i was um i was at home and i i I knew that i wanted to i was living back home and i knew i wanted to live to austin to pursue my career in art um so where where is home in relation um home is five hours south of austin about four and a half five hours right on the border the southern border of texas um and i knew that there were no programs there down there that would really benefit me and so I had tried to make a career in the music industry and that just didn't go well because, of course, like, how are you going to make it in the industry as, like, five Mexican kids trying to play, like, indie pop rock, right? I love it so And much. so so we quit that. What was your band called? Ambelina. Ambelina. It's a that character It's a character from the Coheed and Cambria universe. Oh, okay. Coheed and Cambria have this big story saga with all their music. Um, and so I'm a huge Coheed fan, so we named the band uh, Ambelina. And so... Um, once I figured out that wasn't going to happen, we moved to Austin. Like, uh, actually, me and three other friends moved to Austin, knowing that, like, yeah, let's leave the valley. Let's try to do something cool up here. So, are these the same friends? Um, that have been like here the whole time. No, one of them is uh, mm-hmm. CP, um, and I've known him since I was five. Um, and then uh, JP and Alex are two of the other friends, and so we all moved to Austin. We got an apartment. Uh, we were right out of. A little bit out of college. We were like 19 years old, 19 or 20. <clears throat> Sorry. And so um, going to school there, I applied at Austin Community College because it's cheap or whatever. Wasted so much time there. Oh, my God. I wasted so much money and time. Like you get these cool ass loans and you're just like, I guess I can do whatever I want with these loans. But <laughs> you can't, it turns out. <laughs> but of course, like you'd get this like $3,000 check like, damn, I always wanted that laptop. You know, it's just stupid decisions. Like, yeah. you put that money away and, like, you know, pay off the loan later, but that's not what we did. No, um, no, it wasn't. Uh, and so um, I took, like, a golf class at ACC. Yeah. Me and my two Mexican friends, and the the coach called us the Three Amigos, which is kind of racist, but, yeah, but like, it was yeah. fine. Um, and so um, took a golf class, took a singing class, took, like, stupid classes, right? But it wasn't until... I was um, in a graphic design class, and I, I'll never forget the teacher's name. I don't know if I should name it. Probably not. But I remember her name. She's the only teacher I'll ever remember because on the final day of school, I had really caught my stride with just art at that time. And after not doing art for a while, because I was doing music a lot, I finally got back into it. And on the final day of class, she had always liked my projects. She liked what I had done in... in, uh, in I got good grades on everything, Uh and on the final day, she said, hey, uh, can you can you wait after class for a bit? I was like, and then we fucked. Yeah, <laughs> it was, buddy. It was crazy. No, uh, um, <laughs> she, uh, everybody was gone, and she was like, what do you want to do with your life? And I was like, I, I don't know. I, I want to do something regarding art. And she was like, well, you should really go to a real university. Like, talking shit about Austin Community College, which if you go there... 
Sorry. Like that's that I, I'm sure she just had like some sort of thing against it. She was like, look, you need to go to a real university and harness your skills because you're probably not going to get that here. Like go to a real school. You have a real talent for it. Um, and, I, you know, I was learning Photoshop at the time. I was, you know, fairly proficient. Um, so I took her advice and it was like the weirdest thing for me because coming from a middle uh, middle class Hispanic family, maybe a little bit less than middle class, an art school just never seemed like a possibility. You know, it seems so expensive. It's just like, oh, we don't do that. Like Latinos don't do that. We don't go to art schools. Uh, and I, I talked to a lot of friends and they were like, you should fucking do it. You should apply. So I applied at the Art Institute of Austin and... Of course, you just get in, right? <laughs> like <laughs> They just want your money, pretty much. Uh, but, again, that's where her telling me to go there is what started my path to get here. So I, I went to Austin Community College. Um, I was taking, like, 2D animation classes and graphic design and, and Illustrator and all sorts of shit. Uh, video editing, that's how, like, I got my start learning After Effects and Premiere. And uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to 2D animate, but I realized that I wasn't super great at that. Like I can, I can family guy 2D animate, which is just like walking and talking and moving. But then I would watch, you know, anime and I would see a guy like running on a building and jumping from a building. It's like, I cannot do that. I, my brain, I can't see that shit in my head or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, I think it wasn't until I took a couple of 3D classes that I was like, I kind of like this shit. For, for game design or whatever. And then they opened... So were they game design classes? They were like 3D modeling for like film or games okay. or whatever. Uh, they were more taught, I believe, in the film, um, with the film sort of guidelines, which are kind of different, which are way different actually from games. Um, and, and we were like building environments and building like guns and ships. And I was like, man, this shit's really cool. And, and I'm digging it and I, I feel like I'm pretty decent at it. And then they were like, all right, now build a character. And I tried it, and I was like, oh, man, I'm bad at this. Like, fuck, I guess this isn't what I wanted to do. What do I want to do? Like, I was terrified. What am I going to do? I'm at this expensive school, super scared. You know, I'm a warrior, just naturally. I'm pessimistic all the time. It's like, fuck, I'm fucked. Like, yeah, I'm not good at this. Um, and then it wasn't until I took a 3D art class with... Um, a guy named Isaac Oster, who right now is working at Certain Affinity, and they've they are like the team that all of these big studios look to to make DLC for. Like they worked on the Master Chief Collection, they worked mm. on uh, the Doom multiplayer, they worked on all sorts of shit. Like all these, all the big studios go to them for like their extra content because a lot of that stuff's outsourced. And um, he was super talented. So ZBrush is like three D digital sculpting. Uh, which is how you get the super nice, high-resolution-looking characters in games. To me, when I was modeling with just boxes, extruding, like, s edges, and uh, I was like, how the fuck does a character look like Nathan Drake out of this? Like, yeah. And then, it, and then I was like, oh, that's ZBrush. That's why it looks so good. And I started learning ZBrush, and I was like, all right, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at this, and I like it, and, and I'm digging it. And, um, and then I... I um, what's it called? I, what's the word when you go learn at a school, when you go learn at work? When intern? You intern. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the word, yeah. Kevin. So I interned at, uh, at, at Sony Online, which is now Daybreak, uh, but Sony Online Entertainment, um, with one of my prior teachers, Ben Nauman, who's the environmental lead. And I emailed him. I was like, Hey, I got to get a credit for my internship. He's like, Hey, come intern over here. I was like, fuck yeah. It was like super easy. So I interned there for a few months um on my second day there were layoffs <laughs> it's like the most terrifying thing like <laughs> knowing that like these guys who've been in the industry for 10 15 years and they're super fucking talented and they're they don't have a job anymore and i'm just there like oh my god like this how what future. am i what am i doing like this sucks already damn um so that was terrifying but i needed that to graduate and then we had the portfolio show which is kind of like where you showed off all your shit and and I won best in show at the portfolio show. And I was like, all right, I think I'm kind of good at this. And I, I want to get a job. And, um, and my teacher, Isaac, who was the ZBrush teacher, really liked my stuff. And he uh, 
like at the portfolio review, he was like, yeah, this looks like a colleague of mine. Like this looks like, like you can do this. And, uh, so Fuck super yeah. encouraging, great boost of encourage, uh, of confidence. Um, and then he, I graduated and a couple months later was like, Hey, I want you to take over my job at my old studio. Like I'm, I'm recommending you to have my old job. You can take my spot because I'm leaving for a certain affinity, which is that the place he's still currently at. And he was at, uh, Portalarium, which is Richard Garriott's studio, huh. Ultima, um, I didn't play Ultima. I don't know any of that stuff, but I knew that this guy was like a legend no. in yeah. the industry, you know? Uh, he is the reason why characters are called avatars in video games. Interesting. He, he, that it's, I, I, Kevin, can you Google this for me? Avatar comes from, I forgot what, what language, of, I forgot what the language of origin is, but um, he is the reason why your character in a game is called your avatar. Um, he's the reason why uh, he created MMORPG. Interesting. As a tagline. Yeah, he's just like this fucking legendary he's dude. dude. And he's he's been to the fucking space station. Of course he has. Um, he went to the space station like in 2008. He and his dad are the only father-son pair of astronauts that went to the... Like, it's just crazy. This dude's fucking... Super, but he's like the nicest motherfucker. Like, uh -huh. he's so awesome, dude. Uh, he has like an... Huh? Hinduism. There we go. He has like an original Sputnik in his hanging from his ceiling. All right. All right. His house is like a maze. I don't know. He's just the coolest motherfucker. So I knew that like I'm working with somebody legendary here. I better not fuck this up. And I had great coworkers there. And um, and it was awesome because it was my first games job. And I remember like my first stand up standing up with everybody and being like, um, I'm going to be working on this uh, shield in the game or whatever it was I was making a door, which is what. Everybody gets the rookies get signed assigned to like make doors and stupid shit like that. But to me, I was like, I can't believe that like my job is to hear this guy talk about how he's working on the fucking f flame spells to look brighter or whatever. Like it's just so surreal to me that like I did it. Yeah, I fucking did it. I'm in the games industry, um, and um, and that was great. And it was I learned so much there, and. Um, I had great, really great coworkers and great teachers there. Cause like you graduate, you think you can do it. And suddenly it's like, Oh, you guys do a lot more shit here than yep. what I did in school. But I learned and that's and how I, it happens, man. Yeah. I learned and I, and it felt great. It felt great to, to learn from people who had been doing it for several years. My coworker, Bob, um, worked on like games, like, uh, he worked on a couple of Lord of the Rings games, but hmm. he also, the best, the best fact about Bob is that he worked on. Please tell me he's Fifty Cent's Blood in the Sand. <laughs> no, he Damn worked. On, he worked on the environment in Demonic from uh from um from Grandma's Boy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They like they contracted his studio to make the fake game that is demonic. That is amazing. And he worked really hard on the environment. <laughs> and then he was like, yeah. And then they and then at the last second, they added big ass wings to that motherfucker. And suddenly you couldn't see any of my work because like <laughs> the wings like expanded and like <laughs> covered up all of his work. So. That is so funny. Yeah. So awesome. So um, I learned a lot there at Portalarium. Um, and I met my coworker, Abe, who is this whiz kid. He was, I think, 23 at the time, and I was, like, 27. And um, he got a games job straight out of high school. He didn't go to college. Damn. He had been he worked on the Black Mesa Half-Life 2 mod Whoa. That's how back when he was, like, in high school, like, probably, Mods, like, man. 14, 15-year-old. And he'd just been doing it his whole life. He was just this prodigy who knows how to make art and code and design and... Um, and I met him there and he's cool and like we became friends or whatever. Um, but he doesn't work super well with certain types of leadership. Mm. And so after like eight months, he peaced out uh, to go work for Rooster Teeth. And I was like, my fucker's going to work for Rooster Teeth. Because I was, I'd been listening to Rooster Teeth for several years already. I was like, man, that's fucking awesome. Like, good for Abe, right? Um, and then... I believe it was RTX 2015 the when I met you guys. Um, and the VIP party was going down. And he took a picture with... Uh, fuck. He took a picture with somebody there. One of the... One of the... 
online personalities there that they they weren't they're not RT visual effects guy Wong oh Freddie Wong Freddie Wong I I kept wanting to say uh, uh, Justin Wong but that's the that's, that's Street Fighter NBC <laughs> yeah Street Fighter Marvel um so you met Freddie Wong there and he took a picture with him and I was like mother you're at the VIP party you piece of shit and he was like and then he texted me I commented on his photo and then he texted me he was like hey come over all right so I I went over and I was like how do I get in he was like um we're going to pretend that you're my boyfriend. I was like, all right, I'm down. And so we walked up to the front. We walked up to the, we walked up to the door and, you know, there's a line or whatever. And I, I like, like waved at him as if, I, as if he was my boyfriend. Right. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, so, <laughs> so I did that wave and I get up to the line and he fucking chokes. He goes, Hey, this is my best friend. And I was like, Oh, you motherfucker, dude. And the door guy's like, Sorry, man, can't let him in. This and that. And I, I was like, Fuck, you know. And he was like, What, um, what if I have Bernie come over here? Like, he didn't even know Bernie at the time. He had, he had been working there for like, I don't know, a month or something like that. Um, no, you know what? He had not even started there yet. Oh my god! This was like when oh he he had a, he had uh, accepted the job, right? Um, and the uh, the door guy is like near a staircase. He's like elevated, right? And there's like railings, and I'm on the floor walking near the railings, and he, my friend just Abe just kind of like gives me the eyes or whatever. So we walk inside the railings, and he just like tosses me his badge. Like, fuck yes, I'm gonna go through the back entrance now. Walking up to the back end, she's like, all right, I hope this works. Super nervous. And I walk up and door guy's like, hey, what's up, man? And I was like, oh, I'm just trying to get back in. And he just kind of looks at me, the door guy. I kind of look back at him. And he's like, Andy Cortez. And I was like, David, I forgot his last name. And I was like, David Garza or Pena, I forgot what the fuck his last name was. And he's like, dude, fucking Best Buy, dog. What's going on? Like, we worked together at Best Buy with each other for like yes. six years or something. And he was like, how you been, dog? I was like, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm just trying to get back into the party. He was like, get the fuck in here, dog. So we just like walked in, like totally no problem. And that's what I, and that's when I met all of you all. Um, yeah. And then I met like, and that's when he was like, my Abe, who's, you know, um, working at RT was like, hey, why don't you meet Michael Hadwin? Michael Hadwin was drunk as fuck, as awesome. a lot of people were. Um, and But I still went to go talk to him, and he was like, hey, I think Andy would be a great addition to the team to be an artist. And he was like, oh, great, man. So we started talking, this and that. Michael and then, Hadwin is the... Is the, 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 the head studio guy head. Guy yeah, the head, the head of RT Games. Um, and... And then nothing happened after RTX, which is like, like I came on from such a high from like meeting you guys, from like you all recognizing the art that I had made and, and talking to Michael Hadwin and being at the party and like mingling. It just felt so awesome. And then after RTX, I was like, oh, man, like, I guess I have to go back to work at my old studio, which is like, you know, being in the games industry is kind of a privilege anyway, but I still felt like, oh, man, that was my shot. Um, and then I think in December... Going to Christmas break, my buddy Abe is text me and was like, Hey, after break, do you want to come interview for RT? I was like, Oh my God, I got the call. I got the fucking call. And so I was like, Of course, dude, of course. And winter break comes and I'm back home visiting family, knowing that I was no, I'm still in Austin, but I know that like in two weeks I have an interview with RT. And uh Kevin texts me and lets me know how awesome Phantom Menace, or not Phantom Menace, uh, Force Awakens was, because he just saw it early yeah. with Paula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, it's fucking awesome. And I'm at Ramen Tatsuya in Austin, and I'm walking towards the line, waiting for my friend, and I see Bernie Burns in the front line with Ashley. I was like, oh my God, Bernie's in the front line. What the fuck? Oh my God. Like, get super nervous. Like, oh man. This <laughs> And my friend gets her. I was like, that's Bernie Burns. And she was like, who the fuck's Bernie Burns? Like, I don't watch your nerdy shit. Um, uh, and so we walk inside Robin Tattoo and I'm like, hug. Oh. And I kind of joke around with her. I look to my friend and I'm as if I'm talking to the coworkers. I'm like, hey, can we, can you just sit next to them? Right. That'd be kind of cool. Sure enough. We, they seat us right next to each other. And so we were sitting down. She knows that I'm like nervous the whole time. It's like, it's her, me, Bernie and Ashley. I'm just like, oh man, like super nervous. Or maybe it was Ashley Bernie. And then she goes to the restroom, my friend. I was like, this is where I'm going to talk because I don't want to feel embarrassed in front of her. I turn around, I was like, hey guys. 
Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just want to say hi. I'm a sponsor. Been a big fan for a long time. And they're like, oh, great, man. Hey, nice to meet you. Like, it, totally nice, of course. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bernie and Ashley are fucking great. Um, uh, and then I was like, I have an interview with you all um, in two weeks. And they're like, oh, really? Wow, that's fucking awesome. And it was just cool as shit. Uh, and then went to go do the interview two weeks later. Uh, called the day off from work. Or I said that I was sick or something. Yeah. Uh, they wanted it to just... take note of that. Um, uh, if Andy ever says he's sick. Uh, well, it's feeling kind of feverish, I guess. So they, um, I knew that um, I knew that I wanted to be there longer, even if they didn't want me to be long, yeah. there longer. You know, they said, hey, come for lunch. We'll go out to eat. We'll talk to you for a bit. But I was like, I'm going to like supplant Always. myself in this fucking spot. And so we went out to eat. And uh, after we got food, I was like, I'll just walk back with y'all to the studio if that's cool. And they're like, all right, that's cool. But I remember like walking in and being like, oh, it's Miles. Oh, oh fucking, oh, it's Blaine. Oh, it's Bar. Like, it was so cool, man. Like, again, come, you know, coming from the perspective of a fan who have, who's like watched these people on the internet for several years to now like having this shot to be able to work with them uh, and at the same company is like so cool. And I remember getting home after all, after the interview happened. Um, because I didn't go back to work. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just going to take a nap, you know, it's like 5 p.m. And then I get an email five minutes later. I'm like, wake up, look at the email. Hey, here's your job offer. And like, oh, my God, freak the fuck out. Freak the fuck out. And like, I'm, I'm, I didn't know what to do. I called my parents. I yeah. like, Air- you texted me and we're like freaking yeah. out. Yeah. Um, I te- yeah, I remember, I remember even texting my dad. He's like, I mean, you've got a real grade at where you're at. And you're like, how much do they pay you? I was like, well, they're paying me this much. He's like, oh shit. Like <laughs> that's, that's a good, you know, boost up from what you were making at your last spot. Um, and I was like, yeah, plus like, just go to their YouTube dad. Like, this is like a real, this is a big deal, dad. Uh, I was and so then- upset when I got that text. No, you weren't. I was. No, I you. really was. No, you weren't. I had long. Pl- Kevin. Planned. Kevin's a long conner. Yeah. He was planning. He was scheming. When this I got forever. that text, I texted you telling you the movie was great because I was waiting to hear back. That's a true story. Yeah. Hmm. I hmm. was like, "Fuck." <laughs> it all worked out though. Ha! You know what I mean? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So that's. I mean, like. Again, working for Rooster Teeth was so fucking cool. My first day was the first day of catered lunches. We had tacos. I was like, oh, my God, this place rules. And I was just there last week, and now it's at the point that, like, catered lunches, people are like, oh, do we even really want this right now? No, like, yeah. I mean, it was cilantro at first, and now it's, like, weird shit. Cilantro. It was cilantro this time, too. Really? Oh, but was it, like, the taco, was it the taco bar? No. Because this was, was like, like, a create-your-own taco. <laughs> <laughs> this was a create-your-own yeah, taco. Okay, okay. It was fucking radical. Uh, but... Yeah, so now I was like a Rooster Teeth employee, and it was cool. And I was like, man, I'm like kind of employees with kind of funny. Like yeah. we're almost on the same thing because like I had, I I kind of suspected that you all were doing the Let's Play thing. You didn't tell oh, me outright, but like yeah. I knew, you know, yeah. like. Well, also, I mean, even before you were at Rooster Teeth, you were designing our shirts. Right, yeah. So that was kind of also happening on the side, and that's how we kind of got I mean, even before, and... even before I got hired at RT, like yeah. I, I was still at my old studio, and I remember – uh, you all were looking for a graphic designer, and I said, I emailed you, and I was like, hey, I don't have a portfolio for graphic design. I could do it, but that's not what my portfolio is geared to. And you're like, hey, it's all good. We already found a guy, but do you want to make the Garbage Chuck on Fire shirt for T-Shirt Tuesday? I'm like, sure. So I made that, and then and then you kept coming back to me, and it was great. Oh, that was right, because then we were looking for logos for uh, when we did uh, PS I Love You. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking for someone to make the PS I Love You logo, and we ended up going with uh, Zach Silver, who's fucking awesome. Yeah, he, who's he's like an actual like, hey, logo this is designer. what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's his job, and he he's done uh, PS I Love You, the the morning show, the Game Over Greg show, the new games cast, like for all our logos. Yeah, like, all the imaging for all that stuff. But you were always so good at the more like, uh, like more drawn stuff, more mm-hmm. art, fun like T-shirt designs. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was the initial drawing of you of you four. It was Colin as Mega Man, you as Ash. The Games Cast picture. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Um, but I drew that drawing going um, before RTX, and I was almost done with it. And I like tweeted you all, and you're like, "Oh, dude, if you can finish that, it'd be fucking rad." And then I remember finishing it and being at the the kind of funny panel at RTX, and I'm the type who's like. If you know me, 
I won't ever like want to talk to like personalities or celebrities. I'm just like, hey, I'll let the mob get them if they if they want to talk to them. I'll wait. I'll wait my turn. Like I'm not super anxious about that stuff. I know that some people, you know, can feel weird about things like that. So I wasn't going to mention the shirts to you all like right then and there. But then uh, Sean Pitts, who loves doing that shit, was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, "Love you, Sean." Sean turned around and Sean turned around and looked at me. He was like, "Hey, Andy, do you do they know that you're the guy who drew that thing?" And I was like, "No, I mean, don't worry about it. Like, no, it's not yet, but it's all good." And he was like, "Hey, Tim, this is of course like this is uh, Andy, the guy who drew the thing." So then that's how like you yeah. all like recognized me or you know figured out that I was a dude yeah, who yeah, drew yeah. that stuff. Um, and then yeah, so then the shirt designs just started coming after there, and I think I've made like, I think I made maybe ten shirt designs before I even got hired here. Yeah, maybe there's ten a, or twelve. There's a bunch of shirts you've designed that we haven't even released. The the uh, you're dismissed, the Colin one. Yeah. Um, Shuhei. Shuhei, yeah, uh, I believe in Shuhei. Yeah. Uh, for PSX, I was uh, the Greg Miller. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know the what one I'm that saying? didn't you know sell. <laughs> and uh, and uh, what was the other one? The what's up, everybody? What's up? No, that one wasn't me. Oh, was it not? What What's mm-hmm. up, everybody? Was not mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. I thought that was I thought that was Tim or you, or that was Nick or you. What's up, everybody? Maybe I don't even remember what design for that. It one was, was white. Oh, it was the white. Oh, Greg's face. Greg's face. Yeah. There's been multiple Greg's face. The thing is, the thing with Greg Miller is that he says something and he's just like, we got to get on a shirt. Got to get on a shirt. Yeah. We get on a shirt and it's like, it's not going to fucking sell. Yeah. 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 It is what it is. Yeah. So there's been a lot of shirts made. There's uh, been a couple shirts that like the one shirt that you need to finish at some point is the PlayStation one. Oh, yeah. I remember we that never one. fully yeah. got the idea down, but the, the concept is the KF to look like the OG PS logo. With the colors, with us as like polygonal characters, like looking like Laura Croft style shit. Final Fantasy sort of character. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. idea is there, guys. It is. It is. All right. But, um, yeah. And so, yeah, I made a shit ton of shirts. And so when I got hired at Rooster Teeth, that really made it easy for, because I, because you all would talk about me as well to Rooster Teeth employees. So, like, I remember. The first time I met Blaine, he was like, hey, so how do you know kind of funny? So that was like, that was really easy and cool for me because I was the new guy, but I was, I already felt really accepted by a lot of the, the quote unquote personalities or, you know, the people who are on camera a lot. Yeah. The cast members, because you all had talked about me already. So I, I didn't feel awkward or whatever. Um, Because again, like if I, unless it's like maybe, I don't know, President Obama or something, unless it's like. A really important huge celebrity but if it's just like somebody walking on the street chances are i'm just gonna be like oh that's that guy i'm yeah. not gonna say hi but that's that moment's all you need yeah yeah exactly yeah. I, I just don't want to feel like i'm a burden on them yeah you know, if they're sitting down to eat i just always felt i've always felt weird about shit like that um i gotta look back and, and find at some later point uh, my text with bernie because you texted me when you saw him at the ramen restaurant and I think that after you talked to him, I texted him mm. and then we had a back and forth and I was like, this kid, he's a good kid. <laughs> and I forgot but what don't, he said, but, but don't you take was, him. <laughs> it was so classic Bernie where he's just like, okay, good. I'll make it happen. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm just like, God, you're so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Like Batman's just, or not Batman. Bernie's like the <laughs> he Batman. Is. Yeah. He's the Batman of the world. He you know? is. He's yeah. Just fucking he's happy. just cool as shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like even him, even him tweeting about me when I left over here. So cool. It just makes you feel cool. Yeah. Like, and, and the whole process too, because like, obviously it's all love between us and Rooster Teeth. Like when we were first talking about, um, bringing you over, like that was totally, uh, like I'll never forget it. It was, we're at the Outback classic <laughs> us. It was me and Kevin. <laughs> A lot of big decisions at that Outback, but it was me and Kev, and we're just talking about, like, we're like, dude, like, we need, we're ready to make a a move, and we want to hire an editor, and, like, we want that person to be somebody that's not just an editor, but also a content creator, like, a producer, and, like, that that is as funny, if not more funny than we are. An everyman. But, like, not an everyman, though. Like, I've told you this before, like, we, we wanted someone that had the right personality and the right sense of humor. So it's like it's you know? it's not just a somebody that can do everything. It's we need somebody that is a content creator. Mm. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's a very specific thing when it's like I like that I can task you with something and you can make the product. You get what I'm saying? Top to bottom. That doesn't mean you're an everyman. That means you are a producer. So like if we were to give you a title, I would need like we refer to you as editor all the time. I would actually say it's more 
akin to content producer. Sure. You know, or content editor. I don't either way, it doesn't really matter. But me and Kev were talking about it and we're like going through all the options because we knew that we wanted to to ideally hire from the community. You know, and we were like looking through, thinking about a whole bunch of people. And like, as we were going through some names and uh, there's some obvious people out there that we did consider. Um, but when we got to you, it was one of those things where Kevin was like, dude, Andy, man, Andy's the man. And I'm like, Andy's really good at all these things, but I don't know if he has, like, we need someone that at the, their core is an editor. Yeah. We need that. Like that is the whole purpose and of I us, told you of us that, hiring this. You can teach someone how to edit. And Kevin's like, you can teach him. You can teach him. And I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. And like, we just kept talking. But by the end of the conversation, I was so sold where I'm like, you're fucking right. Like, I'm just trying to talk myself out of this for some reason. Like, just let I'm sure he can fucking do it. <laughs> and then I, I'll, I remember I called you and started talking to you about it. And I was just like, can you edit? I think actually that I texted you. I was like, can you edit? And you're like, well, eh, I can. I mean, I, I can do a lot of shit. That's the yeah. thing. Like, like to me, editing is like something that I like. I did in After Effects four years ago. And it's like, yeah. I, I, like, I, I can edit. Yeah. I can fucking, you know, create complex 3D models. Of course I can edit. Like, yeah. it was like one of those things. Like, yeah, I can learn Premiere or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so, so that that's when it, for us, really hit the like, oh shit, this is real. Let's make this happen. And as we started talking, it was like the number one concern was like, this needs to be all good with Rooster Teeth. Like, we do yeah. not want to fuck up those relationships because <clears throat> those guys have been so good to us and like all of them. And like, once we got kind of got like a real kind of interest level from you, that's when it was like, all right, Andy, we're going to reach out to the big dogs. We're going to make this a thing. And you're like, all right, man, do it. Yeah. And that we hit up Jeff and Bernie and like all their, like, we went all, all the way up to Matt, the CEO. Like, we, we really kind of talked to the whole gamut of motherfuckers over there yeah. to be like, hey, we're doing this. Is it cool? And they're all like, fuck yeah, man. They, the thing that impresses me most is being at Rooster Teeth last week and seeing, Every single person that talked to me mentioned you and mentioned how proud they are of you and how excited they are seeing you kind of be given a platform that you didn't necessarily have at Rooster sure. Teeth. And they're all like, dude, Andy's in his fucking element. Like, he, it's so cool seeing him that way. And what's awesome is that ranges all the way from your team and your bosses to the Bernies and Barbaras and Blaines and, you know, the, the more front facing people, but then also just like the camera guys. And like the dudes that just started a couple. Shout of out to Ben ago. Ernst and Peyton McLeod. There you go. There you go. But it's like it was cool seeing animators talk to us, like people that I don't even really know, but they knew me because of you. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't know me because they're kind of funny fans. They knew me because oh, Andy is with those guys. Went now. to go work. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like this is fucking rad, man. Like you definitely made an impact there. I'd like to think that I did. You did. <laughs> you did. I mean, I, I had a lot of help from you guys, of course, but but that's what's cool. It's like I, I like that this is it is a community, you know, and yeah. like that's the 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 coolest thing about it is you legitimately came from the community, and just like everything that we want to try to do is it's just like we just like the same thing. We just talked for an hour and seven minutes about shit that we like, yeah, that we share these you know situations with, and it's like the amount of times that I've called you and like, dude, we need a shirt for T shirt Tuesday. Tomorrow, here's my idea. Can you make it work? <laughs> and you're just like, I get, yeah, 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 I can. And then you send me something. And I'm like, change the colors. I don't like this. And you're like, all right, man. And then you change it. And you're like, Here, here's the thing. I have a totally different idea. And you pitch it to me. I'm like, fuck, that sounds better. Can you get it done? It's like, yeah, give me two hours. <laughs> that happened like every fucking month. I think I've heard Nick mention this before of the when Tim calls you and says, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 or like, so how's it going? So, what are you doing? That's how I, that's how I start. And, that, my and that's calls. what I know. Like, I'm about to have a long night. <laughs> like, I'm about to, I'm Dude, about to my be favorite in some thing shit. I did to you was um, when we were about to announce the partnership with Rooster Teeth. So going into kind of funny live to announcement. Um, the day we announced was March 28th. I think I told you, like March 14th. Or yeah, something. merch redo. And I yeah. was just like, it was it was during South by Southwest. I was I like, remember. hey, dude, you're under NDA right now. There's a huge announcement coming. Here it is. Now I need you to redesign all of our merch. <laughs> We're doing a whole new store. Refresh that and, shit. And I was like, I have all these ideas. You're like, oh shit. All right, man. <laughs> yeah. And you I made remember. it happen. I remember. Yeah, you made yeah. it happen. But it's just weird for me to think about like again all those things that could have gone wrong along the way. 
Like, if I never worked, if I never, like, really became friends with Abe, he wouldn't have wanted me to work at RT, and I would have never met, like, it's so fucking bizarre to me. Like, I'd like to think that even if I kept going, if I kept, um, if I kept, like, making art for you guys, because, again, the reason why I started making art was the most scheming way thing possible, the most Tim Getty scheming thing was, like, I would see on Twitter, Barbara and Bernie always retweet all these, like, RT artists. I never really see, I haven't really seen, and and then I would follow them, right? Yep. But I never really saw a dedicated kind of funny artist person that would like just make fan art and stuff like that. So I was like, I want to be that guy. Yeah, you fucking and, did it. And yeah, so, that, that, so that's essentially why I'd like to think that maybe I still would have even gotten hired here had I not gotten RT or anything like that. Oh, but 100%. like, 100%. But there were like, there were weird yeah. times of like working at my old studio when I was still under, under contract. And there, were, there was a round of layoffs, and there were going to be more layoffs. And I was just, I remember talking to my friends and being like in a pretty dark spot, not knowing, not really being sure of my future, and like talking to my friends and being like, maybe I'll just go back to school and get my teaching degree and move back home and and you know just yeah. teach art somewhere You're or whatever. A warrior. Yeah, I, yeah, a warrior. I am. And, but but my coworkers were just like, no man, we're not going to let you go. Yeah. Like like my coworkers Hutch and Bob are like the fucking homies, and they're like second and third dads to me like yeah. they were just like no we're not gonna let you go dude like no matter what happens we're gonna fight for you to stay here yep. and they did and i stayed there and then i met abe and then i worked at rt and and uh yeah it's fucking crazy to me two morals of the story that i think are important for for people at home to listen to because i'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are like how can i get into the industry how can i do this and no matter what your age is whether you're you're in high school or whether you're you've graduated college years ago two things that you did that are very important are one do the thing you love. You want to do art? Just fucking do art. And yeah, you tweeting at us or whatever, that's brilliant. That's that next level scheme stuff. But simply just doing it and getting it out there, mm-hmm. you're giving it a chance to succeed. Sure. If you don't do it, there's no <clears throat> chance, right? Second thing, you met Abe. You met me. You met Kevin. You met that dude at Best Buy that got you into the party. <laughs> yeah. Even if you think that what you're doing right now is totally useless, you never know. Like always try to meet the meet cool people yeah. and learn about them and what they're doing. And in the back of your mind, think about like how can I apply what they're doing to what I'm doing? Because yeah, dude, working at Best Buy, like it or not, working at GameStop, those are a step towards being in the industry. Yeah. You know, you 100%. meet people. Meg Turney worked at a GameStop. With, I'm sure with she my did. with my one of my good friends Isaac. Yeah. Alfredo Diaz worked at a, a game or a Best Buy for years. Yeah. You know, and it's like that's how this shit happens. And it's like uh, a, a cool thing to keep in mind, Alfredo worked at a Best Buy and had a lot of coworkers at Best Buy, super cool dudes and, and chicks. And most of them now work for IGN because that's how that shit works, where yeah. it's just like one by one, they just start getting I, I, off. I hate the idea of it's who you know. I think it's more of it's who you know if you're fucking, if you're really passionate and good at what you do. And like, again, a lot of where I got in life was who I knew but I don't think that they would have wanted me to be in those positions if I wasn't capable enough. But I mean, that's, so like, that's it. It's practice, the combination. Practice the shit out of your craft and try to make friends and be social with people, even though it might be tough sometimes. Because yeah. I know I'm the same way. Like, I feel like I can be very loud and, and talkative and, and I try to be funny in videos or whatever. But when it comes to like being in social situations, I'm not super easy to... It's not super easy for me to go talk to this guy who worked at this company that I could possibly have a future with in the the company. Well, that's the thing. Don't be like that. Yeah. There's a difference between being swarmy. Yeah. And don't be swarmy. No. Yeah. And, and like schemey and thinking, and I I use the word scheme very liberally. Sure. Everyone's like, stop using that word. I'm like, I like it. Yeah. But, but it's like, no, you need to, it all needs to come with you. Like you need to be scheming with yourself of like, believe in what you're doing. Keep doing it. And it's not about who you know, but it's about being willing to know people. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because then they will see the the talent or whatever the fuck it is that you have and go from there. Now, the last question I have for you, Andy. 30 you've, second you've been here. You've been here uh, <laughs> three weeks or whatever. Yeah. We've thrown so much at you yeah. randomly. This then very little consistency. However, it's kind of what kind of funny is. Yeah. You know us. Garbage truck on fire. Mm-hmm. You're probably familiar. How has it been for you? And do you think that, did you make a good choice? And are you excited for the future? Yeah, I think I, again, in my first day being here, I was like, what did I do? I don't like any of this. I don't like San Francisco. I want to go home. Really? I want it like, no, not not my, not my work day. The oh, first okay. night of like moving into my spot, 
you know, even even though like Kevin's mom was great and she she hooked it up and everything was fucking awesome. Um, but I still like there was a moment where I'm standing aside along my bed frame and I stood there for maybe 20 minutes just like looking at my bed and I had all this shit that needed to be unpacked. And I was just like thinking of like, was this the right choice? And and I think it was um, I think I knew that I had made the right choice um, when I saw the reactions from people after the first GOG I did, um, where I remember DMing Colin and being like, man, dude, everybody's going to want me to be the next you, huh? And he was like, you'll be fine, dude. Don't worry about it. Like, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, but I was still super worried. And it wasn't until seeing the comments after that GOG and everybody being so, like, welcoming, and not everybody, right, but <laughs> a good chunk of people uh we're like hey i like this guy you know um and i and i think a lot of that was due to <laughs> due to the confidence that i had from the the 30 second videos that i made like i don't think i would have ever had the confidence to do to try to be funny on camera uh until i had a little bit of a following on twitter to make those videos to then get on camera here and 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 try to be funny in front of people and it wasn't until I saw those comments that I was like, man, I guess this probably was the right choice. And and ever since then I I like that I've been I've been used to do a bunch of different shit. I've been editing, I've been designing, but I've also been able to get on camera and, and try to make people laugh. And I get a lot of great feedback on Twitter from people being like, yo, dude, I don't know who the fuck you were. My favorite comment from one guy was like is the same sort of attitude that I that I would have probably felt towards a new person. And he said, man, I saw this guy and I was like, fuck this guy. And then I listened to him and I listened to him talk. And I was like, I like this. Like, I feel like I'm the same way whenever yeah. I see a personality that I'm not super Change familiar hard, with. Man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I get it. And I, and I again, like I, I told people on Reddit, like, look, if I'm not your type of humor, I get it. Like, that's totally fine with me. Um, but the people who have been really welcoming has been – really awesome and really humbling yeah so yeah. I, I i think i totally made the right choice yeah. fuck yeah man we love having you here thank it's, you it's been such a change in the office and yeah. how this all feels but it, in a good way you know it's like it's, it's in life that we definitely need it cool so thank i appreciate you. you well thanks for hiring me <laughs> yeah and i appreciate all of you at home thank you for supporting us on patreon being the best motherfuckers in the entire damn world thank you kevin thanks kevin until next time I love you. <laughs> the mic is off.